here is the front right panel. We know it's the front because our stitch markers are on the front here. And the tail is in the lower left hand corner. I've crocheted up and I've matched it to the back panel. I've already counted in five stitches. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So we've crocheted over to this marker. And from this marker to the end, we're going to slip stitch. And since this is the color change side, we're also going to carry up the multicolor yarn and then bring up the purple yarn and continue. So let's do it. I'm going to take the stitch marker out. Pardon my stomach. I have not had breakfast yet. I'm an early morning crocheter and a after and a late in the morning shower, so that's why I don't have the camera facing me. I'm still in my pajamas, but I find this is the the best time for me to crochet. What's your favorite time of the day to? crochet this way I get what I don't want done and then I've got a greater part of the day free to run errands and you know every so often we got to do housework and I got it and I go pick up the granddaughters from daycare and take them out Yesterday, my oldest, well, my four-year-old had dance lessons, so I got to pick her up from daycare and take her to, well, from daycare, we went to the pet store, and the cats had to have cat food, so I picked up cat food there. I, I do curbside pickup. I don't go in the store. And they seen McDonald's across the way. And they love ice cream. So, like a good grandma, I got them a cup of ice cream each. And then there was a park real close by. So, we had a picnic inside the van. And once they ate however much ice cream they wanted to eat, then they got out at the park we played, we played on the slide and swung on the swings until it was time for her dance lessons, which was just across the street. Took her, got her dance dress on and took her across the street. And she had her dance lesson and um, me and the 18-month-old, we played in the playground until... The other one's dance lessons was done. Then when I brought them home and we had some dinner and the, the four-year-old, she loves markers. So we colored with markers and stuff. So then what we're going to do here is we're going to slip stitch back across and then we're going to continue our half double crochets until we're even with this row over here to start our decreases. So what I measured, what I did is I measured down an inch and a half according to the pattern on, on the back panel. And that's where I put my marker. So, and then I know when, once I get to that spot, then I, I'll start the decreases. But once I get to this point, I'll be back with you. So here we are. We're ready to sew the shoulder seams to the back of the, the back panel. I now have the back side of each panel 
face up because when you sew you always sew from the inside at least I do I'm going to start here in this corner The tip of the needle is blunt, so I have a hard time getting through that little knot there. There we go. We got it. We got it. And the way I, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies. If you're here in Alabama, you probably got allergies at some point in time of the year. The way I sew my seams together for the shoulder seams is I like to use the, the mattress stitch. It's kind of like lacing a shoe. So I've got the corners matched up. And I, as I'm going along, I'm going to sew that piece of string in there. That piece of the yarn in too. So we've got the corners lined up. And then we're going to go over here to the underside of this stitch we're gonna grab it we're gonna pull it through and I myself like to cut off a long piece of yarn so I don't have to tie off and get another piece and everybody does it different so. and then we're gonna go on this side and pick up that stitch side and we're catching the tail of the yarn in there too now don't don't pull it tight to where it puckers just pull it tight towards where it's snug and then when we get all done we'll make one last one last tug under pull through then this side make sure that tail <laughs> doesn't poke through to the front side if it does you could just cut it off just hang on to it pull And to this side here, pull, see I'm getting the whole stitch and now everybody sews their seams together differently, slip stitch it with your hook, slip stitch it with your needle, whatever works best for you, do it that way. This is the way that works best for me. It's your project. You do it the way you want to do it. I'm just kind of here as a guide. Maybe not such a great guide, but I'm going to get it. This is going to be the last one. Go through that whole stitch. Okay. 
and then just hang on to this hand and pull and then pull this tail and we don't want it to pucker we just want it to lay lay flat And then we're going to do a couple passes through. One more. I always try to do this in threes. Then when it gets close to the end there, see that little loop? The pink one. There we go. Got it knotted. I'm going to put a little bit knot in this one, too. If I can get it to cooperate. You don't have to if you don't want to. I just like to make sure it's not going to come out. And then we're going to cut these ends off. And make sure when you do this, you don't cut your project. There we go. And there we go. Nice. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm not going to make you watch. You do it. And we'll be back. Here, <clears throat> here we are. We now have the shoulder seams sewed together. What you're seeing is the front of the sweater, see the stitch markers, it's the top, and the shoulder seams turned out really cute. What we're going to do now is we are going to do the trim around the neckline. I'm going to start right here at this corner. Get it angled here. And I'm going to do half double crochets all around. I had to get four loops on there. There we go. Now 
and just follow the stitches around. Just put one stitch in each one. And I'm only going to do one round. I'm going to just leave it like a little low neckline. If you want to do more than one round, you just by all means go ahead and do that. And I'm going to continue going around. And when I get to the other side here, I'm going to go up around here the back, and then down to the front. And when I get done, I'll be back. All right, so now we're ready to do sleeves. We're gonna crochet from here to here. We'll just do 11 inches. We're gonna do the half double crochet stitches. Scissors were bouncing around. Just trying to evenly space out these stitches. Ghost. Well, guess who? Jackson.
Let's get one stitch per row. Oops. Okay. And this row, we're going to do a decrease here and a de decrease here. to here do decrease put some yarn out Okay, so we're almost ready to do our decreases. Right here. 
Nie? Czy to było? Nie. Insert. Nie. Pomyl. Composer. O, fuj. Now the next row, we're just gonna crochet all the way across, no decreases. At the end, we're gonna sew this to the side. When I get to the other end, I'll meet you back. And on this row, we're going to do a decrease. Every other row, we're going to do a decrease. And I'm also going to do the color changes, too. So... Keep doing this until you get your sleeve to the desired length. Just the sleeve part. Don't do the band. Make your sleeve like I'm gonna I want my total length of sleeve to be eight inches with the band. So I'm gonna crochet this part to be seven inches and I'm going to make a one inch band for the sleeve but when we get to that I'll come back on all right this sleeve is the desired length that I wanted it to be the seven inches and then we're gonna make a one inch band down here with the single crochet back loop only once my sweater got to the width that I wanted it to be I um I quit decreasing and just kept uh, crocheting on so these rows don't have any decreases in them because it would have been this wide instead of this wide now remember this is for an 18 month old girl and that's about how big her little wrist is, is right there. And I'm sure that's going to be a good size for her. So we're going to go ahead and sew all these strings in and make the band. And then over here on this side... We're going to make the sleeve the same the same way. We're going to start crocheting here. We're going to go all the way to the end. Every other row decrease until you get the desired width of your sleeve. So if you get to your sleeve you want it to be five inches wide or six inches wide as soon as you hit that decrease just keep crocheting straight on then until you get to do the desired length and since I'm going to make the band since I'm going to make the band purple I did put one more row of the multicolor just so that it won't blend in it'll have that accent there above the band All right, so I'll be back. Okay, so both sleeves are done. There's the right sleeve and the left sleeve. On this side, 
I went down the edges with a single crochet. So when I start sewing it together, I've got stitches to match up. So now we're going to go down the side with the mattress stitch. We're going to actually start up here, work our way down to the bottom. And then we're going to start at the armpit again and match everything up and work our way up to the sleeve. So it's coming along real nice. When I get this side done, I'm going to do the other side the same way. After the sleeves are done, then we're going to do the, the button panel button panel and the button holes. It's getting closer to being done. I'm excited. So here's the sweater with the sides and the sleeves stitched together. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put the button panel on this side since it's for a girl and the button hole panel on this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to start up here and get my yarn. The buttons that I'm using are 7 8 inch wide. So I'm going to crochet this panel until it is wide enough to center the button on it. I think it's going to be about four rows. And I'm going to do this in single chain, single crochet. I've still got three loops on it. What did I not do? Oh, there we go. That's why. I put my glasses down somewhere. <laughs> Can't find them. Alright. Go ahead and crochet that yarn in with it. Mm. So what you do is you just single crochet down to the end and then back up and down and up until the button the panel is wide enough for your buttons. I just have some plain purple buttons that I got off of. Amazon and they got four holes in them. I like them that big because they're easy to do, you know, button up and unbutton. So if you want to have a large button that you can easily button up and unbutton, that's that's a good size. Alright, I'll come back when the button panel is done being crocheted and we'll space out the buttons and sew the buttons on. We have to do the buttons before we do the buttonhole panel, of course. <laughs> but I'll meet you back here when I've got all four rows crocheted. I think it's going to be four, four rows. But you crochet 
your button panel as wide as you need it to be for the buttons that you're going to use. And I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. So I'm back. Ended up taking five rows of single crochet. These are the buttons that I'm going to use. And it looks like four, four buttons is going to be a good amount to use. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to want a button up here. So I'm going to put a stitch marker here. And here. And then I know I'm going to want a button down here. So mark it with, mark that spot with some stitch markers. Center it in that space right there. So I know those are the two spaces I'm going to have. That's the top and the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these. And I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to mark the center. I'm just OCD. I like things placed evenly. Because if it looks off to me, it just rocks my world. All right. So that's going to be the center placement. Yep, that's the center of this. Well, what we're going to do. Okay, so I know what we're going to do. Since we're going to use four. So we know where the center is. Then we're going to take this button and fold it toward the center this kind of reminds me of that game monkey in a barrel I don't know if any of y'all are old enough to remember that game or the little monkeys uh, arms hooked together and then you had to make a chain. That's kind of what this chain reminds me of. Mm -hmm. Now let's see a button. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing here. Kind of. Mark the center. I should have unhooked a bunch of these before I started. Oh, well. It is what it is. That's the center that one, so we'll put the center 
of the center center of the button that's gonna be too low this is messing me up And I'm going to start at the top, so in the button zone, I'm going to sew the top two buttons. That way, if I need to make adjustments to the middle buttons, I can do that. But I know for sure this is where I want the top button, top button, and the bottom button. Here is my yarn. And it's threaded even. Yes. Okay. Ooh, that's snug going through that hole. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to fight with all that yarn. Let me back some of that up and cut it off. I have found that if you use a lot of yarn, it gets tangled. If I'm not doing things the way that you do it, that's, you know, that's just the difference in people. And I haven't been back to crocheting for a while, so I may do things a little bit odd. But we get it done. And it looks nice. I'm going to tie a little knot in this so I don't pull it through. Make sure it's straight up and down. That's another thing that drives me nuts. Buttons that aren't straight up and down. Buttonholes. I'm just a little bit OCD. Just a little bit. And we're going to come over here to that button hole and pull it nice and snug. See if we could do it another time. Ooh, tight. Yeah, that button's not coming off. <laughs> but, you know, when you're making it for an 18-month-old, you got to knot it up and make things snug because... They're not delicate. Right, I'm going to come up underneath the button. I don't know if you can see that. And just to give it some space for when it goes to the buttonhole, I'll go wrap it a couple times. I think three times would be good. Just make like a, a shank. That's what I call it. Back in the day when I took sewing class, that's what we did. So... Back in the day for me was a long time ago. All right. 
I'll push it down through there. Okay, that's looking nice. I'm going to pick up some. Somehow I'm going to make a knot back here. Hoping not to stab myself with this needle. There we go. And up through the loop. Pull. We'll do that one more time. Because it is going on a child. There we go. And she might just decide to try and rip the sweater off. She doesn't. She's not. Let's see. Pretty soon she'll be 19 months old, so she doesn't know how to do and undo buttons. But she might give it a try. And we're going to make sure those buttons stay on. She'd probably only wear this for... She'd grow real fast, so she might wear this for a few months, and that's about it. And then I'm going to have her give it... I'm going to have the mom, my daughter, give it back to me. So in... Those girls have kids. I can pass the sweater on to them, which is going to be a long time from now, but I'll have them stored away and hopefully in 30 years I'll be able to find them. I can't find things I put up yesterday, so who knows. That's the plan. Alright, so I'm going to finish sewing these buttons on here. I'm going to put one button in each one of these spots. And then when I get ready to make the button hole panel, I'll come back on. Okay, so the buttons are on. Now comes the fun part of the button hole panel. <laughs> the last sweater that I did, it, did this on, I think I ended up doing it like two, three times before I got all the buttonholes lined up. So what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to single crochet up and down twice. Once I get two rows of the single crochet done Come on through there. Once I get two rows of the single crochet done, I'm going to mark where the where I think the buttonhole should go. Hopefully, hopefully we can do it on the first try. But if we have to undo it and redo it, that's that's good. That's okay. So I'd rather it be right than just not fixing it. So once I get two rows of the single crochet crocheted, then I will be back and we'll work out those buttonhole placements. Thanks for watching. I'll be back. Okay. So I started the single crochet over here for the buttonhole panel. I had, no, I had said I was going to do two. But when I put it up to the buttons, it wasn't going to be deep enough. So I ended up doing a total of three rows. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to line up the rows with my, with my trusty stitch markers. Hold it in place. Because even if you get it off just a little bit, it'll pucker. It won't look right. You have to tear, tear it all out. Do it again. And I, I want to try and get this done on the 
done right the first time. So we're going to take a little extra care setting this scene. We can take these stitch markers out when we don't need them. There we go. Okay, so it looks like, first of all, it looks like this button's going to take up one, one, two, three stitches. And we'll, so we're going to start, we're going to chain, chain one, well, one, no, we can single crochet first. Have to do some acrobatics with here with the yarn and the hook. So if I go slow, you know, just bear with me. I really want to get this done right the first time. Okay, so now we're going to do one, two, three. And I'll just lay that across there. So one, two, three. What we'll do is we'll anchor it with a slip stitch. Don't want to really add any hat there. But then I'm going to do one single crochet. Alright. I'm going to pull that out a little bit. And I'm just going to test the position and the. Okay. So that one seems right. Okay. One down, three to go. So yeah, that's, I know it takes a little bit longer that way, but I check the placement each time. That just ensures I don't have to go back and do it again. I don't know if you can hear my cat in the hall. He went to the vet today. He's not sick. He got his rabies vaccination and uh, shot for supposed to prevent upper respiratory infection. We've been trying to get him to lose weight. He weighs 16.8 pounds. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing is, is he eats the least amount of the food and he's the biggest cat. <laughs> Maxie, come here. Come on. Look here. Come on. Up here. Come on. Come on up here. No? Okay. He was not very happy about going to the bed. My husband took him. Let's see. That looks about right there. Now we'll chain three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Anchor here with a slip knot. And then we're going to chain one more. Single crochet. Here we go. Just to make sure it's anchored firmly. No wobble room. Pull some out. And we'll check this one. So if this one and this one. Yep. See how that's laying nice and flat? So. That's a good placement right there. And 
And then we're going to do the next two. I'll be back um, when I'm done doing the last one. And then I'll show you the next step to finish off the buttonholes. I'll be back. Okay, so we ended up getting all the buttonholes done correctly on the first try. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to finish off the buttonholes. And then this cardigan will be done. So I got the buttonholes unbuttoned. And we're going to do our yarn gymnastics here. Flip everything around. Make sure the yarn doesn't get caught up on my tripod. Okay, dokie. So, we're going to single crochet. Then we're going to slip stitch around the buttonhole itself. Since it was three chains to make the buttonhole, we're going to do three slip stitches. And then continue with the single crochets up to the next one. We're going to slip stitch around this buttonhole three times and single crochet. Trying to make sure I don't miss any stitches. So I have to look around the camera, look around the tripod. <laughs> You need to be flexible when you do this. I'm going to need some more yarn. I have my yarn in a box and I punched a hole. Um couple of holes in the box that's what I've been pulling the yarn through keeps the yarn for me it keeps the yarn separated and so it doesn't get tangled up This is the third button hole, and we have one more to go. Slip stitches. And just because I would like for the row to end at the bottom of the sweater instead of at the top, 
I'm going to do one more row of single crochet on the other side. Let's first see, make sure that this is going to line up before we get ahead of ourselves. Nice. Move all my gadgets off the table here. Okay. So yeah, I'm just going to do one full row. A single crochet from top to bottom. Then we'll tie it off. Tuck the string. Call it done. Now I'll just give it a good look over. Make sure I've tucked all the strings, cut all the loose ends, and get it ready for my 19 month old granddaughter. Yesterday I was telling her sister that I was, you know, I'd already made the four year old a sweater. And Hers was pink. If, if you, you know, you can watch the videos and you can see it. And I was telling you, I'm making H a sweater. And she asked me, what color is it going to be? And I said, purple, because everything I make for H is purple. And she said, no, H told me she wanted pink. Now, H is 19 months old. Well, she will be 19 months old. H did not say she wanted pink, purple, blue polka dots or anything. <laughs> <laughs> she should just be glad to get it. I think it'll be so cute. They'll have mat. They'll mean matching, but not matching, matching. some more yarn out. Oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. Oops, did it too many times. <laughs>
seam stitch. We are done. Scissors. Put the string in the, put the yard in the needle. Does it down? Oops, don't want to curl that. Up. Go upside. Other side. I have no intention of this coming undone. I'm gonna catch that loop right there. Make a knot. without cutting the sweater. And there it is. I hope you like it. Thank you so much for joining me in this crochet along. If you like the video, please click like. If you'd like to subscribe and get more videos from me, please click the subscribe button. If you'd like to be notified, of course, click on the bell. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for coming by. Take care. Here is the front right panel. We know it's the front because our stitch markers are on the front here and the tail is in the lower left hand corner. I've crocheted up and I've matched it to the back panel. I've already counted in five stitches. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So we've crocheted over to this marker and from this marker to the end, we're going to slip stitch. And since this is the color change side, we're also going to carry up the multicolor yarn and then bring up the purple yarn and continue. So let's do it. I'm going to take the stitch marker out. Pardon my stomach. I have not had breakfast yet. I'm an early morning crocheter and a after and a late in the morning shower, so that's why I don't have the camera facing me. I'm still in my pajamas, but I find this is the the best time for me to crochet. What's your favorite time of the day to? crochet this way I get what I don't want 
done. And then I've got a greater part of the day free to run errands and, you know, every so often we got to do housework. And I got it and I go pick up the granddaughters from daycare and take them out. Yesterday, my oldest, well, my four-year-old had dance lessons, so I got to pick her up from daycare and take her to, well, from daycare, we went to the pet store, and the cats had to have cat food, so I picked up cat food there. I, I do curbside pickup. I don't go in the store. And they seen McDonald's across the way. And they love ice cream. So, like a good grandma, I got them a cup of ice cream each. And then there was a park real close by. So, we had a picnic inside the van. And once they ate however much ice cream they wanted to eat, then they got out at the park we played, we played on the slide and swung on the swings until it was time for her dance lessons, which was just across the street. Took her, got her dance dress on and took her across the street. And she had her dance lesson and um, me and the 18-month-old, we played in the playground until... The other one's dance lessons was done. Then I brought him home and we had some dinner. And the, the four-year-old, she loves markers. So we colored with markers and stuff. So then what we're going to do here is we're going to slip stitch back across. And then we're going to continue our half double crochets until we're even with this row over here to start our decreases. So what I measured, what I did is I measured down an inch and a half according to the pattern on, on the back panel. And that's where I put my marker. So, and then I know when, once I get to that spot, then I, I'll start the decreases. But once I get to this point, I'll be back with you.